Hi there and welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. So today we have uh, titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red, medium yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. And for our medium, we're going to be using liquin original. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at all of these large shapes of color. So before that, here is an image of our model Steve. And I'm gonna keep a picture of him to the top left corner of your screen so you can refer to it as the painting develops. Just keep in mind that the camera is going to have to be at an angle with respect to the painting uh, such that I don't block the painting footage. So let's go ahead and just evaluate all of these shapes now that you're seeing the uh, image in the corner over there. So I'm thinking I'm going to go after these large masses of color just like we did when we blocked in the simple shapes of light and dark. So I'm thinking right around here I'm going to want a dark green, kind of ultramarine bluish green. Whereas we're going to have like a kind of mid purple lavenderish color over there. And around here, we're going to have pretty much just a, a deep cadmium red and just most of our darks, I don't know, just ivory black, ultramarine blues down around here. And even still today, I don't really want to put too much detail. I just want to cover the big picture in terms of the colors. So let's mix up that dark green color. So I'm going to be using my uh, size 10 Filbert Polytip Bristle. I thought this was a 12 earlier, but anyway, this is the large brush that I use to tone the canvas and to paint in the large light and dark shapes. And as you can see, this brush is doing just fine. So we're gonna be using our liquid to thin out the paint, get a nice consistency. So the value is going to appear a little bit uh, different because the uh, the values for the areas of the painting that are dry, that is the color, uh, it's, it's going to appear a little bit less dark. So this pass is going to look a little bit uh, darker and it'll actually dry, it'll, it'll dry a little bit uh, clear. So that being said, all I want is a value that's dark not as dark as ivory black or ultramarine blue. And I want it to be blue, but not as blue as ultramarine blue. So in order to achieve that, let's throw in a little bit of our burnt umber there. And once I obtain the color that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the rest of it. I'll just show you how I get the color. All right, so let's see if this consistency works. Another thing to keep in mind uh, is that tomorrow this layer will probably not be completely dry because ultramarine blue and ivory black are pretty slow dryers. So tomorrow we may work on some areas of the painting while others are still drying. Not sure if this is the best thing for the painting, but you know, gotta keep moving. So let's see, I think this value is about good. So what I'm going to do is just apply a little patch of the value right next to the flesh tone, the flesh tone from the first color pass. And I'm going to stand back and see how, how that value relates to the value for the flesh tones. I, I think it's all right. I think it's, it's good. Now that the value is working out, I think that the color could change a little bit. I'm not going to try to nail the color perfectly because I know that we're going to we're going to be working on this for some time. So we'll come back and adjust the color um, when needed. But I think that the value is good, but the color could change a little bit. So we're going to throw in a little bit more of the sap green, ultramarine blue. And on a side note, these colors uh, were the same ones I used yesterday. I just put the paints um, on a piece of glass and then put that piece of glass in my freezer and it's like nothing. Now burnt umber is pretty much the only one that 
will dry. That is dry overnight. So that's a little more ultramarine blue. It might not be perceptible to the camera, but it does have a kind of a more bluish tint now, but still, still, still. I want a little more green, so we're gonna throw in some yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, a little bit more Neo McGilp. Neo McGilp, man, I missed that medium. I still need to go back to the art store. But you know, Liquid Original is working just fine. Okay, I think that's about it. I think that's the color and value that I want. It's a dark green, but it's not quite an obvious uh, sap green mixture. So tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the rest of that. And now that we have this shape covered, I guess the next one I'm going to relate uh, this dark to, I think last time we bounced from here to here to here to there. Um, I'll tell you what, I think this time, let's go over here. Um, so uh, that's a dark reddish color, almost impossibly dark to see in the photo reference. This dark is so similar to that one. Um, and it's gonna be nice to relate this red here to this red. So first of all, let's just use the same puddle that we had, just so we can maintain the tonality. And I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a Lizarin permanent, um, keeping in mind that this will probably take a couple days to dry. So I'm thinking tomorrow we'll probably revisit the portrait and uh, start to kind of develop the forms a little stronger. Maybe still in the same, uh, in the first color pass mentality, since we are going to uh, return to the painting studio uh, to work from life on Tuesday. I think that's what we'll do tomorrow. So a little more alizarin permanent, pretty much just mixed into the colors that we had for that. So let's just put in a little segment here just a little spot and relate that value. So ask yourself, does the value look right? Even before you're thinking too much into the color. Remember, color can always be adjusted. And I, I don't know, to be honest, I, I gotta stand back pretty far back. And yeah, it looks about fine. And um, another thing, now that we're adding even more paint, it is going to glare a little bit more, meaning it's going to reflect the light, the light bouncing around in the studio. Just another thing to keep in mind. All right, so I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this, this, and maybe this down here, just because it's gonna be basically the same shape, so, it doesn't make sense to show you me covering all of this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cover all this now. All right, now that we have that covered, I know that I still left this and uh, I did change kind of the shape of the armrest of the chair. Notice it kind of curves up. That still doesn't quite bother me too much. I can always go and paint this in later. Um, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit darker than the photo reference, or than I would even see it in nature, just so this little metallic thing doesn't stick out. Now the next logical, I guess, logical area to look at would be here. So notice how comparing this value to this value. Now I'm gonna compare this value to this value. So I'm going to stand back. So it looks pretty dark. This looks about the darkest region of the painting. And um, very minimal stuff going on in terms of the, the detail. And um, those smaller shapes will, will be easily added in later. The first thing though is to get the large value. So I'm gonna mix in the same puddle. I'm gonna make a color that's a little bit cooler 
but very similar in value, if not just a little darker than this shape. So I'm gonna go in and throw in some ultramarine blue. That's gonna be my first kind of guess. So let's take a stab at it. Let's see. And um, yeah, I think that's gonna work. Trying to keep the edges kind of soft, yet still uh, some of uh, these edges kind of with a very feather-like touch. Trying to keep them soft, but still with a very def defined edge. Especially, especially right there. That's a really sharp edge. And um, yeah, wow, how that sharp edge really helps that just emerge out of the canvas. Now that's starting to look much more dimensional. So a little bit softer, how about that? We'll, we'll make it a little bit softer around here and sharper there, just to pull that shape forward. All right, so let's go ahead and just make this edge darker now, but softer ever so slightly. And um, I'm letting the underpainting show through. I'm going to be building this painting through uh, transparencies. I just like the way that it looks to be able to see uh, the layers underneath. So I think that's about, that about covers all of the more delicate edges. You know, maybe we'll throw in, how about we'll throw in one more little sharper edge right there. Doesn't quite have the impact as this one does. But all right, now I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the rest of this dark shape. Yes, yeah, so I don't wanna do too much in terms of the detail uh, for this portion of the, uh, the vest that he's wearing just yet. Just a few little marks of light and dark there will do. Yet yeah, trying to keep it fairly dark overall because when I stand back and squint, all of this kind of almost disappears. So the next area to look at, well, I could look at, say, this one, since this one's right next to this one. Uh, or I could look at this one, since this is right next to this. I don't know. What do you say? What do you say? This one. So I'm going to relate this shape also to this shape. So it's going to be uh, pretty dark, but not as dark as this. So I'm going to take that into account. Let's just mix into the same puddle. Why not? So a little bit of cadmium red medium into that area. And another nice thing about mixing right into the same puddle with the same brush is it kind of uh, neutralizes these colors. I don't want to put anything too bright. I don't want to put anything overly chromatic can always put that stuff in later. So again, just pretty much the same colors we have with the addition of cadmium red medium to uh, basically lighten the value while still keeping it pretty red. So let's go ahead and compare. So we'll make a mark, stand back. And uh, you know, it's, so it's all right. I still wanted to get a little bit I want to say um, a little darker. So let's use the alizarin permanent and the ultramarine blue. So Wins Winsor Newton's alizarin permanent, ultramarine blue. I think also Winsor Newton. I think almost all of these are now Winsor Newton, just because you know I go for whatever's on sale at that time. So right there, let's try it again. There we go. Now it's gonna be kind of similar to this shape, but it's gonna be a little bit more red and a little bit lighter. But essentially they're going to be the same for now. Just very similar. So I'll show you how I deal with this edge. And then again, I'm just gonna cover the rest of that shape. No need for detail at this point. 
So this edge, this, an, an elusive edge really, it's, I want to say that it's sharp, but it's not sharp. It's kind of like an in-between edge. So just by running the brush, letting the brush fall ever so slightly, we can get that kind of quality that we're after with the edge. And um, I guess one more thing before I cover everything in the blink of an eye. Um, with a little more ultramarine blue, we are going to put kind of a sharper edge over here, right there. Just to get that shape, see how that's kind of just like jumping out now? Just to get that edge to pull focus. There we go, see how quickly we can get the the thing to look like the thing, or at least start to appear like it. Like it's now, it's starting to look like something is emerging out of the canvas there. And I'm gonna soften right around here, sharpen there, sharpen here, sharpen here. A little more paint. Let's get it. There we go. So sharpen there. And we're going to soften over here where these little pieces of uh, paper um, intersect one another. All right, so now that we have that, that uh, little edge established, now we'll just go ahead and cover the rest of this dark shape for the shadow here. All right, so now that we have all these shapes uh, painted in for the dark of the fabric. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, separate the light now into just two tones. So let's start with the first one. Just added a little bit more cadmium red medium to it. So the aim, well, let's use a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. So the aim for these two tones is to introduce very simple planes. So for drapery, drapery can be pretty deceptive. Um, drapery is definitely one of the areas where less is more is kind of a thing. So I want to be careful not to put too much and not to worry too much about the color just yet. These are large uh, value relationships and we're building the color in this kind of way. So a little bit of a value uh, mid-tone right there. And another mid-tone will be painted in over here. Now this value is very subtle. It's very, it's very close to that of the shadow. So gotta be careful not to make it exactly like the, um, the shadow. Though in the camera it might look the same as the shadow. Uh, but I assure you, it's not. Okay, so... Let's go ahead, a little more cadmium red, a little bit more cadmium red into that end. Tiny bit more ultramarine blue, because there's gonna be a pretty definitive plane right about here. So that looks about right. And we're gonna leave room for the uh, for the half tones, you know what? I think I missed, or sorry, for the light shapes. I think I missed this whole shadow. This whole thing was supposed to be in shadow. Whoops. So again, that color is um, alizarin permanent, ultramarine blue, ivory black. You know, it's gonna be even darker over here. There's gonna be an accent. And um, again, that's when one form meets another. So that's going to be kind of important in the illusion of the drapery. And again, we're taking it one step at a time. No need to worry about finishing any one area. Instead, we're building with simple color. And that's it. All right, so now let's go ahead and just throw in the cadmium red medium. So, right about here, there's going to be a light, pretty definitive light change. 
There we go. And just with the cadmium red medium, no need to complicate it. Now I know that this red is actually a little bit cooler, um, but we'll be able to do those little adjustments working from life or just in uh, the next layers of color. A little bit more of a bright shape there. Super simple. This is going to be a nice color to contrast uh, with these blues over here. Alright, so that looks about alright for the light shapes. So just cadmium red medium. Don't need to complicate things. You know, and again, I'm, I'm kind of like a parrot. I keep saying the same thing over and over and over. But in reality, like um, you're probably going to expect me to say, keep things simple, simple and easy. And try to stand as far back as possible. I'm pretty far back from this. And also know what you're looking for. Painting can be very, very difficult if you don't know what it is you're after in any one particular uh, layer or pass. A little more of a dark shape in there. All right, let's go ahead and cover this really fast. kind of a workout for me covering all this it's my workout of the week it's getting my cardio in here and that's the fun of big paintings I really really enjoy big paintings um, you know me I like to walk around in the National Gallery of Art once in a while and just stand there and stare at the sergeants, the Peter Paul Rubens, all of those paintings. All right, so the next logical, I guess, um, area to cover would be this, because it's a red shape. It's pretty, pretty similar to this, but you know, I think it's a little bit darker. So I'm throwing in a little bit of burnt umber ultramarine blue right into this little area of the palette. So let's go ahead and just put that shape in there. There we go. It's very nice to have a large brush cover all of this very quickly. So again, the burnt umber helped to kind of, I don't know, change the hue of this in relation to this. All right, so the next thing would be, I guess, the light shape for that book. Getting a different brush, we're gonna put some yellow ochre right around here, some burnt umber. There we go. And just like that, very simple. Now we have a light plane for the book. I'm gonna leave that light alone for now. I'm gonna get a different brush and we're gonna look at the light green. Let's put some more liquid original, mixing in a different area. I'm gonna use yellow ochre, sap green, burnt umber. Let's try this out. And that looks about right. Might be a little bit dark, so let's add a little more yellow ochre, some more liquid. That looks a little better. And now for the, uh, for the binoculars, 
I'm not really going to render out too many small details for it just yet. So what I'm going to do is just, uh, with a little bit of ultramarine blue, uh, burnt umber, lizard, and permanent, what I'm going to do is just get the values, the most emphatic dark values, being here, here, squinting my eyes, here, here, down here, over here, and um, just very, uh, let's add a little bit more cat, or sorry, ultramarine blue, some flake white. I think this is the first time I even used any of the whites. Interesting. So, there we go. So I'm just gonna cover this, and we're still going to keep the binoculars with very little, um, we're going to keep the binoculars with very little detail, little to no detail. Just the shape. Alright, so the next logical area to look for, why do I keep saying logical? The next area to look for, you know, I guess contrasting this shape with that shape would be kind of nice. And maybe I could even use, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to use a larger brush, larger brush. There we go. So this is going to be a size 6 filbert. So I'm not going to, of course, put in all the details for the globe just yet. I honestly have no idea how I'm going to paint in all those details. Uh, we'll figure that out later. So first of all, let's just look at the big picture. So with a little bit more liquid original and the ultramarine blue, tiniest bit of flake white. Going to have to put some more ivory black into this later. Just look at the value for now. So it's going to get darker over here. So darker as this part of the globe turns away. And we're building the color. We're not trying to go for the final color. We're anticipating the way that these layers are going to build. I know, I know. I need to use a bigger brush for this. So I'll tell you what, while we have a brush that's probably too small for this, let's just go ahead and just cover this little corner of the side of the globe. So that is the shadow. We'll leave that be. And now we're going to return to the larger brush. Actually, let's use the palette knife for this. So what I want is a kind of uh, neutral purple, or should I say just like a cool brown color. So I'm going to use um, the alizarin permanent with the burnt umber, a little bit of ivory black, ultramarine blue. So this is going to give us a nice and dark brown. The reason I'm using palette knife is just because I don't feel like cleaning off the brush. So a little bit more cadmium red medium will help bring back the brown and some ultramarine blue. We'll throw in some ultramarine blue. And I want the value to be pretty dark, but I don't want it to be as dark as the uh, ivory black or the ultramarine blue. So a little bit more flake white. And now we're starting to get, get that kind of neutral purple, but it got a little too light. I think. I don't know actually. I think it got a little too light. So a little bit of lizard and permanent and I think we're about ready. And I don't really want the color to be that uh, kind of that matte or that perfectly, I don't know, it's almost even too saturated for me right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush and I'm actually going to clean it off a little bit 
not completely, but just a little bit with my odorless mineral spirits. Just dab the dry on the paper towel. Sorry for the palette shaking there. All right, that's clean enough. I'm gonna just charge up this brush with this color and we're gonna cover that large shape in the background. And that's actually pretty good. That's the, uh, the color and value that, that I was after. So before I go ahead and cover the whole thing, I think um, what I'm gonna do is just show you how I paint in the dark fabric for the drapery. So let's go ahead and get the uh, some brush that has some dark on it. So this one, don't really care too much about what dark it is, as long as it's dark and just so happens to be pretty much the value that I want. Uh, so I'm going to just paint back and forth with this light brush and this dark brush. Very simple there. And this is how I'm going to get the, the effect of the drapery. Very simple. No need to overwork this. All right, I tell you what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just cover the rest of that. Yep, that shape took quite a long time to fill in. Uh, you saw me mix up this color. There's a little bit more ultramarine blue here on the side, um, but that's really about it for that. Man, it did take a long time to cover this though, and quite a bit of my ultramarine blue, but that's okay. I think what we're gonna do now is get, let's see, do I have another brush I can use? Uh, yes, I do. So I'm gonna get another brush and I'm going to start to paint in some of these light shapes. So let's go ahead and mix a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let's say right down here, a little bit more of our liquid flake white. You know what? I think some titanium white got into my flake white. Whoops. Anyway. That's what happens when you save your paint in the freezer. You confuse your flake white with your titanium white, but it's all right. Um, so a little bit more green, so sap green, almost like a sky green, really. All right, so we have this light blue shape. Let's get a darker one. Let's take some of this color. So now we have kind of a little value scale. We'll use this one. So we have kind of a little value scale, not in order though, uh, for our blues. So let's go ahead and start to paint the book. All right, so let's start with the dark blue. So right about there. And again, we don't have to go for the right value right away. I mean the right value. Yes, we want the right value. Uh, we don't have to go for the right color right away. Rather, we just want to continue to develop the, uh, the values. Hope I said that right. We're after the values. Just putting in our first simple indications of color, that's all. And yeah, I did throw a little bit more of a bluish tint here, purplish tint there. You can definitely see quite a bit of purple in here. And um, that's because I am trying to paint this um, of course, I'm trying to paint this very similar to like an old master painting, but I'm also taking into account modern color. Uh, so you don't really see too many bright purples like that in, um, you know, your, your Rembrandts or your Caravaggio's and all of that. So I'm going to kind of push some modern colors into this painting. Not too much though. I mean, obviously I'm gonna take right from something like that and just neutralize, just neutralize that purple just so it's not straight up purple. It's easy to paint a regular, your regular everyday purple um, and not really pay too much attention to the saturation. So we're 
trying to be careful not to oversaturate. Just taking from all over the palette, just so we get something to neutralize that purple. And that's about good for that. Now I'm actually going to take a different brush. I'm using a lot of brushes today. I'm going to have a lot of cleaning to do after this session is done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and throw in that blue that we mixed up earlier. This brush is kind of a little too stiff, but oh well. Let's go ahead and mix a little more of that color. So it was just the uh, titanium white ultramarine blue sap green so we're making kind of a sky bluish color all right so let's go ahead and put that that's too blue so i'm going to use the titanium white again to raise the value but also kind of bring down the saturation a little bit of sap green that's a lot better so that's the color and again we're not going for the um we're not going for the final color just yet. You know, I am kind of pushing the chroma a little bit more on the book. And that's because I kind of want this book to glow, to look like it's glowing a little bit. And um, once you figure out your value relationships like we did in the underpainting, you really have so much control over uh, the hue, over the colors. So that's what we're doing. It's almost like a light path of color just gradating through here and getting a little bit darker as it approaches the hand. I'm going to leave some of these brush strokes to show through just because, you know me, I like the painting to look like, um, like to be able to see the layers underneath. And we'll, we'll add all the little details and nuances of this book um later after this layer dries so let's see let's get this dark brush let's put this little plane change here this is a literally a plane on the book that's turning away from the light whereas this shape over here is turning towards the light and we're almost done i'm just covering these light blue colors um just so we can move, so just so we can be ready to start to apply more elaborate shapes in the still life later. Don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I think tomorrow we're going to try to make the face look more realistic, like come to life. A little bit darker over there. Missed the spot. Let's cover that. No one needs to know. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and put in another dark shape right here. Shadow being casted by the hand. There we go. And all the little details for the book, we will be able to paint in, uh, like I said before, later. And so now, I'm going to take the, hmm, you know, I'm tempted to paint with both brushes like this. I'm going to take the large brush and I'm going to clean it off. And then um, I'm going to paint in the color for the globe. And I think once I figure out that color, I'm going to put that color in there. Very simple. And then I think we'll call it a day after that. So I think I'm going to actually cover this before getting to the globe, but don't worry, we're almost done. So I'm going to get a little bit of a grayish tone, pretty much just ivory black and uh, titanium or flake white. And I'm just covering this with a very transparent dark. Now I'm not gonna try to paint it exactly like the photograph. What I am focusing on right now with this is the value. I don't want the value to get um, 
too bright. I just felt like it was kind of sticking out. So after that, gonna get the brush that I was using with the book. Not really gonna mix much for that. And just take a little bit of light there. Very simple. Just look for the main highlights for this, for a metallic object and you have a metallic object. Or at least the illusion or the effect from a distance of a metallic object. And then we'll throw in some some darks. What the, let's see, take another brush. Let's see what's on it. And uh, it's pretty close. Pretty close to what I want. So it's gonna get darker over here. Let's take something, let's just take whatever from the palette. That's dark. Let's throw that in there. Don't need to stress out about the metallic shapes. And that's that. Now let's get to the globe. Now after cleaning off this larger brush a little bit, I'm going to get a very similar color to what we had for the book, but just a little bit less blue. I don't know. So we'll throw in some alizarin permanent and let's just get a little bit of this little greenish color that was already on the palette. And I want a blue that's not too saturated. And I also don't really have a lot of paint in this area here, so I'm not terribly going, I'm not going to be terribly concerned about the, like, like I usually say, not, I'm not worried about getting the exact color. I'm just trying to continue to build the value and drawing arrangement while adding in simple color that's going to lead us in the direction of the more true colors. A little bit of a blue gradation here. See how we have a little gradation of blue? That's what we're gonna use. So this is what we're gonna use for the globe. So we're gonna go right from the shadow, creating this little dark light. So this is the dark light. This is the value just as light uh, turns into shadow. And again, I'm still not terribly concerned with having a perfect sphere today. I can always come back. And I will. We will come back and uh, make it much more exacting. But we want something that we can work with. And again, this is a very large painting, so I want to cover pretty fast. So a little more titanium white. And we're gonna to start to put in these lighter shapes. Very soft touch. And as you'll notice, certain areas I'm leaving in their underpainting color, in the grisaille color, uh, which is on purpose. I want to leave some areas in the underpainting just because they're pretty close to the color that I want. So I don't really think that I need to cover every square inch of this. Very simple there. So for instance, I'll probably leave this in the underpainted color. A little bit more of a highlight, throw in some, some more titanium white. Remember that the photograph is blasting the highlight a little bit more than it actually would be in life. And so I think that's gonna be about it for today. So today we covered quite uh, a lot of surface with this color pass. That being said, it is my hope, my dream, and my ambition to bring the experience of being here in the studio creating uh, 
classical realist paintings or creating paintings in general, creating painting videos that impact the lives of people in a positive way. And it all starts with you. I really hope that these videos help you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, I'll be back again in another 24 hours. And this is what the painting looks like as close to front and center as I can possibly get the camera. Now there are major problems with having the camera front and center and that's the reason why I don't film is because of that and because of the fact that I would cover the canvas if the camera was front and center. But anyway, that is what it looks like after today. So I wish you the best in all of your artwork and I'll be back again tomorrow.